too. Hey there, fellas. Today I've got myself this lovely car. Remember the experiments that we put this one through? I mean, the last one, after which the engine ceased to be functional. It's due for some repairs. And now people have been arguing about what's more durable. Welds or a bolted connection? And so today I suggest we answer that question. We just need to open this engine, extract the pistons together with the connecting rods, at which point we chop them up. And some of those we weld back together, while the rest we secure using some bolts. After that we reassemble the engine and fire it up. We do that, go for a ride. I try taking it to Redline to see what happens, what holds up and what lets go. Maybe it'll all stay together, who knows. Let's do this. Hi guys. So we've finally gotten around to making our own merch. Here's what we got so far. We're always adding new stuff and we'll ship you anything to anywhere in the world. Oh yeah, and one more thing. The first 100 buyers who use the code GARAGE54 will receive a 15% discount. So go ahead and hit the link in the description down below and happy shopping! Welds versus bolts. Testing their durability on Conrads. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Alright fellas, here's what we're looking at. Here we have four pistons attached to their respective connecting rods. We've hacked all four of those. And here's the situation. Two of these connecting rods we put back together using a few store-grade mild steel bolts. Just the regular zinc-plated type. We got some automotive-grade ones for this here. Though it's probably a bit of a stretch to call them that. So we all know that the black automotive bolts are more durable than the hardware store ones. Then we've got these two conrods. One we've welded together using a MIG welder, while the other one we did with a TIG. It's all very simple and nice. Four connecting rods, two of them pieced together in a similar fashion, the other two welded together in a similar manner. There are only but the slightest differences within each pair. Now why don't we throw it all together and I'll head out and beat on the car to see how durable all of this actually is. Let's have at it. Here's what we're looking at, fellas. We've put everything back together, the motor, I mean. 
It all appears to be in perfect order. But how is it actually going to work? Well, we're about to find out. Let's fire it up and see what happens. What the? What is going on? Almost. Keep going. It's trying, but it's afraid of something. What gives? No, oh, something's happening. Give it a bit of... I said a bit. That was too much. We did a compression test and saw eight atmospheres in three of the cylinders and six in the last one. It does start, so perhaps that's why it doesn't run stable, with the compression slightly lower in one cylinder. You fire it up anyway. We need this engine to run. It's trying really hard. What are those noises it's making? That clicking? Well, we're getting somewhere. The engine works with those welded conrods. I can't say it's 107% confident. But at the very least it started. We need to put the dipstick back in. There's oil spinning out. Shut it off. We should put the dipstick back in. It stops right away. It does. And that's all because... It's a bit constrained. It was barely spinning. One of those conrods must be a bit crooked. It works decently. But it doesn't want to hold idle. Maybe it's just too cold? In any case, we have to try this out. I'm gonna rev its pants off. Gonna go hard. It is moving. Unwelded conrods. Fantastic. Clutch kick. Oh no, it just spit something out. That didn't last long. I wasn't even looking to drive away that far. But all it took was one clutch kick. And I saw some chunks of something flying out. Okay, let's go have a look then. What have we got here? Cylinder number four gave up. Oh my, it even took out the oil pan. The engine block. I honestly wanted to drive a bit more. Didn't think it'd end that soon. I can see coolant and oil pouring out. Literally everything. It took out the sleeve. That's it. It is toast. So I went and found uh, the missing pieces of the block. Here they are. This one even has the sensor still attached. I guess it decided that it didn't need an extra sensor. And decided to knock it out. So there you have it. But this is just the view from up here. It's not easy to see inside, though. Shouldn't take too long to take everything apart. So let's go back to the shed, tear the engine down, and see what happened to it. Let's do this. 
Okay, time to head back. I'll try getting the car there under its own power. I was able to get here with the block having exploded 40 meters prior. Didn't I say that these were amazing motors? It started no problem. Didn't run for long though. Listen to it sneezing. Oh my, the thing even drives. We are moving with a shattered block on three cylinders with no oil. Okay, so after removing the oil pan, as well as the cylinder head, the pistons are still in there, the other rods are fine, don't see the point of removing those. They are feeling very good in there. However, one piston together with its connecting rod, the one that we secured using them high-quality automotive-grade bolts with the high tensile strength, well, it let go for whatever reason. It fell apart into tiny and strange-looking bits. I can't quite understand how these fell off. In any case, you can clearly see the aftermath. This one is now very short. Seriously, all that's left are tiny bits of it. There's your result. Nothing unexpected. Now, I was expecting the welds to let go first, but in reality it was the bolts that fell apart. Let's go have a look at the block. We've got a hole in the oil pan, you can see how it was all rotating, falling apart and out. So yeah, that's minus one oil pan. It's quite thin, so it's not that hard to breach, especially using metal. And let's take a look at what happened to the block itself. You've got a hole. The surface to which the pan is secured also looks broken. Seems like the block is headed straight for destination. Scrapped to be melted down and whatnot. Maybe someone will make a nice pot out of it. Everything else seems to be intact, since we didn't induce any sort of detonation or anything like that. Here everything held up, except for that one bolt connection. What's interesting, I literally just noticed that there's another hole in the engine block. We couldn't see it from above because of the starter motor, which is located right above it. The sleeve is also damaged up there. Wow, did it make a mess. I've tried on many unsuccessful occasions to make holes in blocks, but this time it was easy. Right, fellas, you saw it all, and that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.